Hey, it's Lori. It's Hello there. Let's there. see. Is that on? It's kind of on. Yeah, it's on. Okay, okay. okay I'm going to make it a little bit louder. This is pretty good, right? How's that? Jack, I, pretty good. Quick introduction. I'm co proprietor with Paul Cooper, who last is in bed with the flu. But we're delighted to have Lori and, and the pleasure of invading her dreams, because that's essentially what this book does do. And she does it magnificently. So you're going to read, Lori, and then uh, talk I'm and read take the, questions. Basically, the captions. <laughs> it's going to be pretty quick, <laughs> you know. Uh, but fortunately, it's a beautiful evening, so it'll be over in a, in a second. <laughs> so, and I'll just tell you a little bit about the the book first. It was. Um, uh, it's a book of drawings with dreams. With um, and the reason I did this project was I was on a tour doing the same show every night for a couple of years, and uh, I was by myself, so I was traveling by myself basically. And so after, every, so this is like a, many different theaters, many different hotel rooms, always alone. So uh, it was um, very very lonely, and I was getting a little bit weird you know, doing the, the same kind of thing day after day. And so I, uh, my dreams kind of went out of control. And so as a kind of way to just uh, uh, have a little bit of a revenge on my own dream life, I, I began to draw them. I just kept a little computer tablet next to the bed in the hotel. And whenever I would just uh, wake up, I would just draw the, whatever fragment it was. You know, and it wasn't really a complete a dream, but I suppose there aren't any complete dreams, and uh, and it's also, you know what it what it's like, like um, telling people your your dreams. It's somebody starts telling you your dream, they're like, I was walking down a road. No, no, no. Wait, it wasn't a road. It must have been. And then this woman who looked like my aunt Ellen, and you're like, oh, everyone's glazing over. Like I hope they don't continue doing this. You know, it's they they don't really have plots. They're they're only really your own private theater. And so I thought that what, that I would try to um, just capture them uh, as I went. And so that's what these drawings are. And we're going to look at them. Um, in sequence, because they're all dated, and then I want to talk a little bit about um, uh, the um, the process. Maybe after reading, what we'll see. Okay, so this is the cover, and this is the first um, dream. I won't read the dates; it's a little fuzzy. Um, Henda squirrels are singing. Their voices are strangely tangy. Smell of new cement. A raw, unhappy feeling in the air. Can you see that? Yeah, you kind of can. That's okay. Um, after the show, Trisha and I are bowing. Phil comes out from the wings to take a bow. He's wearing sexy red lace Bermudas. He has glass legs, which seem brand new. He skids and slips across the stage. Manhattan on a rainy night. Very heavy traffic. People walk up and down a glass corridor that juts out over the street. Let's see what I can do. Klaus has invented a device that works like a heat-seeking telescope, uh, telescopic MRI. We're shooting a film and he's aiming it at all the extras. I'm hoping he doesn't use it on my dog. I'm in a rotunda, like the Farnese Theater in Parma, where they used to stage naval battles in the 16th century. Not every show needs a plot, I keep shouting. Very few people are in the audience. Some are holding big signs. I don't actually seem to have a show, only props. The meeting with the production company is really awkward. To lighten the mood, I pretend to skate, sliding my feet back and forth and spinning, humming ice skating music. <laughs> Some people think this is ridiculous. Uh, others begin to give it a try. <laughs> I've been trying to reach my friend Jacqueline, but she's not answering my emails. A big glossy art book arrives in the mail. Apparently, Jacqueline and a friend co-wrote the book using transparently ridiculous pen names. Included in the book are cloth samples of the outfits they wore while writing the book. I think this is narcissistic, but I'm jealous anyway. Shattering. Everything in pieces. Phone numbers. 
wrecked things. A strange metallic smell. The Hudson River is calm today, ruffled only by a few white caps. I turn my head for a second. When I look back, everything's chaos. Taking my mind for a walk. <laughs> it's bitterly cold. The sound of flags flapping in the wind. Tinny patriotic songs on the trumpet. I've not been born yet. I drop into my office around lunchtime. A man with a head like a, like a boiled mutton is filing papers and typing. I realize this must be my new assistant, and I try not to seem too surprised. 